Well, it's the top of the hour, and I want to say thank you for those that are joining us for this Live Vision Success Academy. It's July 1st, and I want to wish each and every one of you a happy Independence Day weekend. Whether you're traveling to see family or family's coming to you, I hope you have a safe, enjoyable, and fun weekend as we celebrate 246 years as a nation. We're going to talk in this particular session of the Vision Success Academy about the three call close, the psychology behind its success. And I want to initially open with the results of a survey that was done by Real Life Management. And here's what they found. Producers who fail to engage in a systematic process to uncover their clients' wants, needs, and goals, and the motivation behind those wants and needs and goals are only 40% as effective as they could be in closing more sales. Now think about what that statement just says. If you're a producer and you are not taking the time to uncover what your client wants, what they need, what their goals are, and the motivation, their why behind it, you're only closing four out of 10 opportunities that you could be closing on. How does that relate to your bottom line? Now, the problem is what? The problem is the fact that most financial professionals are stuck in habitual patterns of behavior that are limiting their success. The most common one is this, assumption-based selling. Assuming you know in advance exactly what it is the client needs before you ever have an opportunity to dig in deeper and really learn what it is that the client actually wants, the problem they want you to solve. Far too often, I see financial professionals walk in the door and they've got a bias towards a particular product. They only sell IUL or they only sell bonus annuities or they only sell whole life or they don't believe in med advantage. They only believe in meds up, whatever it may be. If you walk in the door believing you've got one pet product, you're always going to sell. That's a bias that's limiting your success. And for many of us, it's status quo mentality. In fact, I just published in the Black Belt Leadership podcast today and in my blog today talking about homeostasis, this mental gyration that goes on in our head that limits our ability to grow and to see success. And when we get into the status quo mindset that I've learned everything I need to know about insurance, about investments, and I stop learning and I stop growing, Ray Kroc said it best, as long as you're green, you're growing, but once you're ripe, you start to rot. How many rotten advisors do we have today because you quit learning, growing, and developing yourself? There's also a bias of longevity in thinking into how long people are actually going to live, another significant issue. But here's the most important thing that came from that survey and the results that we saw from real life management, and Boston College actually backs this up with a study they did in 2022. More than 80% of Americans have expressed an interest in improving their ability to understand what? To understand how money works and how to make money work for them. This study from Boston College showed that consumers today don't want to be sold. They want to be educated on how money works, how they can make their money work for them, and they want to be engaged in a solutions-based process of understanding how to move the opportunity forward so they can actually see that the solution you're bringing to the table actually lets them accomplish their goals and their dreams and their ambitions. But more importantly, one of the big things that came out of this Boston College study was this, people want to be heard. And yet, what do we see far too many financial professionals say in the conversations we're having with financial professionals calling in, asking for guidance and advice, or wanting us to consult with them? Here's some of the things we're hearing. And I, I don't know what my client wants yet, but I want to show them this idea to see if they like it. Can you run me an illustration for X or Y or Z? What is that? It's an assumption. Now, I only sell bonus annuities because fill in the blank, and that you're using that, that's a bias or that's a product-based focus. Well, I haven't met with my clients yet, but I know they're going to want to talk about X or Y or Z. Again, making an assumption. Now, I, when I go see my client, I want to show them these three things up front so they can choose which one works best. 
without even knowing what the client's goals, needs, or objectives are, what do we see up to this point? And these are actual quotes that we are hearing from financial professionals calling in, wanting us to help them solve a client's problem, and they don't even know what the problem is. The last one really gets me, and it's this one. Well, they'll buy what I show them, so let's run an illustration for whatever it is that their pet product is. That is a recipe for disaster. And you wonder why financial professionals aren't as successful as they are and why the public deems financial professionals right there about equivalent with a used car salesman a lot of the time. One I heard the other day that just really floored me was this. I only sell S&P index strategies, so don't run me any other crediting options. Well, I don't know if you looked at the S&P index of late, but it's down and going down. And as we go into recessionary periods, I was just having a conversation with a producer on the phone. When interest rates are low, stocks grow. And when interest rates are high and going higher, stocks die. Now, as a result of that, being in an S&P 500 index that's going down really may not be the best place for your client to be allocated right now. When money leaves the United States, it goes somewhere else it can grow. And if it leaves and it goes abroad, why not be invested where money's actually growing? But all of these statements that we're hearing from financial professionals says this, it's about me and it's about what I want to do with the customer. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's not about you. The customer doesn't give a rat's hind end about you, your product, your expertise, the letters after your name, the numbers after your name. They don't care about any of that. They want to know that you're going to listen to them that you're going to be genuine and honest in your conversation to understand what is important to them. And as a result of that, deliver a solution that actually allows them to accomplish a goal, a dream, or an objective, or to deal with a financial stressor they want out of their life. And that leads us to an understanding of the psychology of the three call close. Now, when we think about the three call close, you may be thinking, John, that's a long sales process. And it's really not if it's done correctly. And as we go through this, you're going to understand a different way about selling than maybe you're doing right now. And you may be using a variant of this and don't even realize it. And maybe as a result of attending today, you're going to learn a few things that are going to help you be even more successful than you are right now in meeting your clients, understanding their expectations, exceeding those in your solution, and having an opportunity to get them to say yes at the end of the conversation. So what is a three call close? Here's essentially what it is. Number one, it's identifying the problem. What does the client want you to solve and what is their number one problem right now? Now understand your clients may have multiple problems, but based upon the psychology of the brain and how we think and how we do problem solving in our brains, we only solve one problem at a time because the brain can only focus on one thing at a time and do so effectively. So the goal is to identify the problem or problems the client has. Secondly, identify the one problem that is the most pressing at this time and solve that problem. Thirdly, during the delivery of the solution and then they say yes to what it is you're offering, after you do the paperwork, you get the solution in place and you sold them an insurance product, an investment product, whatever it may be, you're going to go back and review and reaffirm, here was the problem you said you had, here's how we solve the problem, here's how this tool helps us accomplish what was important to you. So let's dive into each of these segments and take a look at what that looks like. In the first appointment, you are there to diagnose the issue. You're there to be able to understand at the end of that meeting, what was the client's problem? What was it they wanted you to solve? Is there a specific goal or an objective that they're trying to achieve? And what does that goal or objective look like to them? Do they have a desired outcome they want to experience in their life? And how do you help them financially position what they have to create that desired outcome? Or whatever it is, your first appointment is going to be understanding problems, goals, objectives, and outcomes. But ultimately, you're going to be linking that to your solution and how it actually benefits the client. The goal at the end of the day is what? To identify what is a win for the customer 
So when you go back during that second appointment and you meet with them, you're going to say, here's what I heard you say that your problem was. Here's the goal or objective you wanted to accomplish. This is where you wanted to have as an outcome when you retire. Then you're going to link that back to your solution, show them how it benefits them, and let them experience the win that they want to get from you. If you can answer this one question, what's a win for them after meeting with you and working with you, that's the solution that you want to solve. Now, you've got to set expectations up front to do that. Number one, you've got to think into your values as a financial professional. What do you as a financial professional want to be known for? Do you want to be known as someone that's a product peddler or someone that only sells one solution? Or do you want to be known as that solutions focused expert that's going to get to the bottom so that you can help your clients get a win? You need to think into what you want to be known for because this is how you're going to treat your customers. And ultimately, you need to understand that if you can get a win for the customer, that becomes a win for you. Now, as you're meeting in this first appointment, you need to sit down and be able to explain your process to the client. You need to explain the sales philosophy that you walk through and why. You need to help them understand this is the approach we're going to take. In the first meeting, I'm not going to present any solutions. I'm simply going to ask questions to understand what's important to you. I'm then going to go back and I'm going to do my homework so that I can evaluate and determine the best possible solution or solutions to your problem. And ultimately, what I want to do is to create the win for you that you want. You also, in setting expectations, you need to explain to the client how you're paid, that you're paid two ways. And this is an important psychological tip that's going to position your clients to become part of your unpaid sales team, i.e. your referral source. You need to let them know up front and every time you meet with them, I get paid two ways. Number one, when I create a win for you and I help you implement a solution that financially improves your situation. And secondly, I get paid when you, Mr. or Ms. Client, introduce me to someone just like you that has similar wants, needs, and concerns, and I can help them. Those are the two ways I get paid, and I ask my clients to work with me in both of those areas. Are you okay with that? Now you've set the expectation that you're going to deliver a solution. And if they like the solution and it meets their needs and it gives them a win, they're going to buy that from you. But secondly, you set the expectation that you're going to expect them to make introductions to individuals they know that you could serve in the future. So what does this first appointment look like? It's asking questions, asking questions to identify their goals and objectives. Asking questions to get to the emotions behind it. What are your fears? What keeps you awake at night? What is it that stresses you out? Understanding their concerns and getting to the emotions behind the anxiety they're experiencing is going to be so important. And you also want to ask questions to understand their knowledge and their experience in working with money, whether they have a little, a lot, or they've got questions that they need answered. You want to engage in a fact-finding process, and really, you're looking to answer four questions. What do they want to do? Why do they want to do it? What have they done up until now to accomplish whatever it is they want to accomplish? And is what they've done up till now working? Because you want to look at what they're doing now, and if it's working, you don't want to change that because now you look like a product peddler. But can you add to that? Can you build upon that? Is it actually accomplishing their goals and their objectives? They may have bought a financial instrument that they were told was going to do X, Y, or Z, and it's not done any of that. Or they may have bought a financial solution that's outperformed their wildest expectations and doesn't need to be changed. As a financial professional, you've got to be okay with that. But understanding in the first appointment, no selling. You're there to listen. You're there to learn what is important to them and you're there to understand what they ultimately want to accomplish and what their wins are. I want you to think of it this way. Think of yourself as a money doctor, and you're there to diagnose the client's money problem. Now, you've got to do your work up front. You don't walk into the doctor and say, I'm sick, and the doctor doesn't write you a prescription until they run some tests and they ask some questions to evaluate what's going on. 
That way, the prescription they're going to give is going to best treat the problems and the symptoms that are manifesting as a result of that. If your client's got a money problem, as you're asking questions, those symptoms are going to show up, which is going to point to the ultimate root cause. That's the problem they need you to help them solve so they can create the win in their lives. Now, your goal in this first appointment is to get them talking and keep them talking. You want to use open-ended questions, things that are going to require them to give a long answer. You don't want to just ask yes or no questions because you never get to the heart of the matter. You want to make sure you're actively listening to the following things. Number one, what are they actually saying? What are the words coming out of their mouth as they're answering your questions? And what are they telling you in that statement? You also need to be actively listening to identify what they're not saying as a result of what they're sharing with you and why are they saying what they're saying. We want to get to the intent, the motivation behind why they say they want to accomplish this or that in their financial plan. And ultimately, we want to make sure that we're paying attention to how they're saying it. We want to listen to the words they're using, the tone their volume, their pitch, and we want to make sure that we are observing their body language. Because when you truly get to the heart of the matter of what's important to them, their body is going to begin to speak as much or more than the words they're actually saying. And when they become passionate about what's important to them and their win, the problem they want you to solve, that's going to become evident if you can get them talking and you're paying attention and not simply thinking about what do I say next. Now, a little tip extra for experts. A couple of months ago, I did a in-depth training on how to be an effective listener. You can go to visionadvisorsinc.com. Upper right-hand corner is our YouTube channel. You'll find this training and several others there. But if you want to become an effective listener, I encourage you to carve out an hour of your time to go through this training. And it's really good for your entire staff and to go through this training two, three times a year to continue to hone your ability as a listener. Now, there's some specific questions that lead to conversation, and I want to give you a few of these. You'll find on the fact finders that are available on our website, visionadvisorsinc.com, in the resources area, a lot of these questions are attached to our fact finders. But again, conversation is where we want to go. What questions get us there? Well, Tell me about your family. Learning about their family, their background, the experience, we can identify whether or not there's a longevity issue, whether or not this family has struggled with money their entire lives. There's a lot of things we can learn about the why, the motivation, the fears, the anxieties by asking about the family. It could also be an opportunity in understanding the family to ultimately be introduced to those other family members so you can serve them. Another great question is, are your parents still living? And if so, how old are they? How's their health? Are they still living at home? Those questions open up the opportunity to look at longevity, to look at if the parents are still living, or is there a possibility if the health is getting bad and the parents are old, might they end up coming to live with the clients and prospects you're having a conversation with? And what does that look like? Or could there be an opportunity to have a long-term care conversation opening the door to create conversation. Tell me about your work history. What have you done? If they're already retired, tell me about what you did when you were working and what do you miss about that? Again, trying to get to the motivation and understanding what's truly important and what this person values is going to be essential in the follow-up second type of the sales process as we get into part two of the three call close. Are you going to retire if you're still working with a pension? Are you going to have a 401k? What keeps you awake at night? Money, inflation, health issues, family issues, things going on in the government. What is it that stresses you out? Do you have any health concerns as you approach your inner retirement? Are you optimistic, pessimistic, or realistic when it comes to retirement? This is a great question to ask and an opportunity to go deeper. Once they give you the answer, go deeper and say, well, tell me. Why do you feel that way? And from that, you're going to begin to get to the emotions, the anxieties, the concerns, the stressors, the things they want you to alleviate by solving their financial problems. 
Are you going to wait into retirement? Are you going to jump in with both feet? Are they going to be one of those folks that moves from full-time to part-time and then from part-time into fully retired? Or maybe they're going to have a hobby. They turn into a job like my dad did. My dad worked for many years in the clothing industry and then later on in the furniture industry, learned how to work on clocks. And when my dad retired, he never really retired. He moved his clock business home. And at the age of 86, my dad still works on clocks for people all over the country. You need to understand that about your clients because that plays into the planning you're going to do. Another great question. Have you reviewed your social security earnings? Social security, as you know, from prior trainings, is going to make up 40 to 60% of your client's guaranteed income in retirement and asking if they've done an analysis to understand how much their social security benefits going to be and when the best time to make that claiming decision is a very important conversation. Many overlook. Here's another great question. What does retirement look like for you? What does it look like in the next three years, in the next five years? Are there trips that you plan on taking with your spouse or taking your grandkids on a special journey? Is there a special event that you want to make sure that you're going to celebrate? 50 years of marriage, 60 years of marriage. Is there a vacation destination you want to make sure money set aside that you can go to? And then you can get into the more granular questions is, have you ever sat down and counted the cost to understand how much money you're going to need to support yourself in retirement and whether or not what you save is going to be enough. Those are great questions that lead to conversations and what you're looking for are two specific answers. Again, what is the client's problem they want you to solve? The goal, the anxiety, the objective, the dream, the problem, whatever it is. The second answer you're looking for is what is the desired outcome? What's the win for them that they're going to expect you to deliver when you come back? The importance of asking questions is great but asking clarifying questions is even more. And I talk about this in the conversation that I have in teaching effective listening skills in the separate training you'll find on the YouTube channel. So here's what I want to point out to you. Listen with a desire to learn and listen with a desire to understand. Because if you get the client talking, they're going to share with you their most pressing need at the moment. They're going to share with you their win, and you ultimately want to get to the real reason they've agreed to meet with you, and that's their what they want you to accomplish and why they want you to accomplish it. Now, asking clarifying questions can really help you get to the heart of that, because oftentimes when someone is giving you answers and you've not yet built rapport with them to the point they're willing to fully and completely open up, and again, watching body language and tonality and pitch a lot of that will be revealed to you. But when you get to asking clarifying questions, you now begin to peel back the layers of intimacy so you can truly get into what's important in the heart of the client. And that brings us to the seven whys. Now, the seven whys is a questioning strategy that's based upon human behavior intelligence. And how it works is this way. You ask someone a question and they give you an answer. What does retirement look like in five years, Jim? Well, retirement to me looks like this. Then the next response is the first of the seven whys. Well, Jim, why is that important to you? And then Jim is going to give you an answer of why retirement is going to be important to him in his first answer. And as he shares that, you're going to pick one element of that. Jim may say, you know, I've worked my entire life and I want to be able to have some time to play golf and do some of the things I didn't get to do much when I was working. Now we go to the second why. Jim, why is playing golf and doing those other things you didn't get to do while you were working? Why is that so important? Why do you want to make sure you've got time to do that? And as you're walking through, going deeper, you're forcing the client to go within themselves and get out of their head and get into their heart where their why exists. When you begin to ask these questions and as they're answering you're looking for a part of that answer to ask the next why. Or maybe it's not a why each time. Maybe the verbiage switches to, tell me why that is important to you. Another way to ask the why question. The goal is to get to the heart. And if in a few key areas you'll use the seven whys, your clients are going to reveal to you exactly what it is they want you to do for them. And they're going to feel like that you have now become an extended member of their family because they've literally bared their soul with you. 
And once you've gotten this information, now you've got an opportunity to go back to your office and do your research. Again, you're going to go back and try to identify and answer the question, what's the problem they want you to solve? What's the win for them, that desired outcome? And then ultimately, what is the tool in your toolbox, the product that you're going to present, but only after they say yes to the solution to solve the problem? Now, let's look at the second appointment and how we position the second appointment in the three call closed. The second appointment is where you're going to connect the client's problem to your solution, not product, your solution. Again, we're going to be talking conceptually, creating a desired outcome. We're not going to mention the product until we get the yes on the solution. And you'll see why as we go a little deeper in the second appointment. In the second appointment, you're going to go back and initially you're going to restate their problem. You're going to restate their goal or objective. You're going to restate their desired outcome. And then ultimately, once they affirm that's what they wanted you to solve, you're then going to link the answer to how you're going to do that to the solution you're going to present and ultimately how it's going to benefit them and what their win actually looks like. Now, just as before, you're going to set expectations, your values, your process, and reminding them how you're paid. And now let's look at the psychology of problem solving. In this second appointment, you're going to initially restate the problem they shared with you in that first appointment. You want to secondly confirm this is indeed the problem they wanted you to solve. From there, you're going to have what we call a positional ask, Jim and Betty. If I can show you a solution that actually solves this problem and helps you accomplish X, Y, or Z and gets you the win that you have said you wanted, is there any reason we can't work together? Notice, this, notice the flow here in the psychology. I've restated the problem. I've gone back inside of them and I've stirred the pot and I've brought all that pain and discomfort to the surface. I then confirm this is the problem I want them to solve while they're feeling the pain of this problem they want to go away. And then I come in and say, Jim and Betty, if I can present you a solution that allows me to take this problem off the table to solve it, to get you to the outcome that you want, to help you achieve the goal of walking away from the job that you hate to enjoy the retirement that you've been longing for for the last five years, does that solve your problem? When they say yes, they've now created a situation where they are open for you to present not the product, but the solution. After you get a yes to the positional ask, you're going to transition into sharing them how the solution you're presenting benefits them. You're going to share with them the benefits and advantages of your solution. Let's assume as an example, you've got a client that comes to you and they've got $700,000 that they just got from a business. And the client comes to you and says, I need $4,500 a month for the next 10 years because I'm 74 years of age, and I want to make sure I've got enough money that gets me to age 84, but I don't want to spend all of that $700,000. I want to make sure there's some money left over in the event I outlive my life expectancy, which chances are I won't because my family's had some health issues and I do too, but I want options in the event I do. Now, the solution to that would be to come back and say, Jim and Betty, Having looked at the $700,000 that you provided, I can present you an opportunity to give you a guaranteed paycheck of $4,500 a month for the next 10 years. And whether you live 10 years or your wife lives 10 years or you both live 10 years, you're going to have a guaranteed paycheck for the next 10 years of your life that gets you both to life expectancy. We hope you live that long, but if you don't, then your daughter is going to continue to receive that $4,500 check that would have gone to you and your spouse for the remainder of that 10-year period. 
and Jim and Betty at the end of that 10 year period, because you didn't want to put your money at risk and we put the money we're not using to create income into a growth focused solution. I've been able to take some additional monies and grow back 400,000 of the initial 700,000 we started with. So Jim and Betty, you've received $540,000 worth of benefit over that 10 years if you live that long and now you've still got $400,000, we can repeat the process again. If that's important to you, does that solve your problem? Is this what you want? And when they say yes, they just bought my 10-year immediate annuity and they just bought my multi-year guarantee annuity that's going to regrow the portion of the money that's not generating guaranteed income for the next 10 years. That's an actual solution we just saw for one of our financial professionals to meet a client's goals, needs, and objectives using this very same process. Once they say, yes, this is what I want, now we're back to moving into presenting the tool, the product. But notice in this conversation that we've had what it's not about. That entire conversation was not about your product. It was not about your service. It was not about your opinion. It was not about your preference. It was not about you at all. It was all about the client in helping them achieve a win. And if your client achieves a win and they say, that's what I want and they buy from you, guess what? You just won too. Notice in that presentation, the product was never mentioned in that entire conversation up until I got the answer to, is this what you want? Only after they said yes and bought the solution would I even have a conversation about the product. Because if the product I'm presenting doesn't solve their problem, it's the wrong product. It's the wrong service. So what does your clothes actually look like? Your clothes in the second appointment is this. First off, restating the problem and getting a yes to, is this the problem you want me to solve? The second close, if I solve your problem, is there anything that prevents us from moving forward? The third yes you're looking for, having presented the solution, the benefits of what you're going to offer to them and the tool you're going to use, the third yes you're looking for is this. Does this solve your problem? When you get those three yeses, your odds of having that client say no to the product you're going to pitch has almost completely gone to zero. Why? Because of the law of commitment. People want their beliefs and their behaviors to be consistent with who they are, their values and their image of their self. And here's what we know from human behavior. Once a person, you get that first yes, and then that second, and then that third, here's what happens in the brain. The brain says, this is the desired outcome I want. And the brain then goes through a process of making decisions that are congruent, that agree with that yes. And when it agrees with that yes, and it moves the process forward, they feel the anxiety lifted. They feel the stress begin to subside. They begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and they realize it's not a train about to run them over. They're actually going to get out of the maze they found themselves in with no way out, and you have been their guide to get them out of the desert and into the promised land. Now, going back to the psychology of selling and problem solving restate the problem, confirm it's the problem. We get the conditional yes. We present the solution. Is this what you want? Again, moving through that. And only after we get the answer, is this what you want? And they say yes. Only then do we bring the product or service into play. We're essentially at that point going into the toolbox and saying to achieve the goal and objective to solve the problem, to create the income I'm going to provide you for the next 10 years, here's the financial instrument we're going to use to make that happen. We're implementing the fix. And at that point, we're going to show them how the product that we've chosen, the service we're going to use, actually creates the desired outcome that validates that your solution is true. And exactly what you said you're going to deliver in that solution is going to be delivered by the tool that you're going to use. You get a chance to explain why you selected this tool over any other tool in your toolbox in showing them how it creates the outcome that they said that they want. And ultimately, you're going to say, here's how the product generates 
$4,500 a month, or here's how your service does X or your product does Y. And then at that point, it's simply a matter of doing the paperwork. Now, to put this solution to work for you, I simply need to get a few simple answers to a few simple questions. Is that okay? And the minute they say yes, you start completing the application. Now, that's the first two parts of the three call close. You say, John, they just said yes. Where's the third part of the three call close? It comes when you deliver the solution. When you go back to deliver the solution, again, we're going to go through the same process. And there's a reason for that. We're validating their decision as a good one. We're reinforcing any negativity that may have arisen, any doubts, any competitors that may have come in and said, that may not have been the best decision you should have done. Maybe you need to ask these questions. So when you go back to deliver the solution, again, revisiting the problem, the goal, the objective, their desired outcome, how it links to your solution, how it benefits them, and ultimately reminding them you've got them the win. And as with every other appointment, you're going to go in, cover your values, your process, reminding them of how you're paid, and then you're going to simply walk back in a short, firm version of restating the problem, confirming that this was the problem, making sure that you said, this is what you said you wanted to solve. Here's the solution I presented. You said, this is what you want. We completed the paperwork. Here's the tool that we use to accomplish the problem. You then have an opportunity to go and deliver the policy, deliver the paperwork, remind the client of how this tool creates the desired outcome that they want, cover any required disclosures that you're required to disclose, answer any questions that they may have. If a signature is required, make sure you get that. And then what happens next? You need to understand human behavior. Because once the brain solves its most pressing problem at the moment, the brain immediately shifts to what's next? What's the next problem I have to solve? Now we go back to the very first appointment. And when you are having questions and identifying problem or problems, they probably shared with you more than one problem. And if you were good at what you did, you prioritize those problems. And as you check the box and you solve problem one, where's their brain going to go? To the next most important problem. And they're going to want to solve that next. But here's the deal. If they don't know that you do that and you don't ask them about the next problem they won't solve, guess what? You're the invisible man. You're the invisible woman. They don't know that you exist. And as a result of that, when it comes to the point that they're ready to make a decision and actually seek someone out to solve that problem, they're not going to pick up the phone and call you. They're not going to show up at your office. They're going to go find a competitor that is telling them, this is a problem I solved. And if as the result of going through the three call close, you don't go back to the first appointment and begin that cycle over by going to the next problem they want to solve and saying, okay, we just solved your guaranteed income problem that you said was the most important thing. Now, the next thing you said you were concerned about was making sure that as you're going through retirement, the value of what you're able to buy is going to be diminished over time by inflation. And you wanted a plan to create a hedge against inflation. Is it okay if we start working on that next? And then you're right back into the conversation process, moving into that next sale opportunity. If you don't do that, you just limited your opportunity. It costs eight times more money to get in front of a new customer than it does to do repeat business with an existing customer. And yet over 95% of sales professionals never do any follow-up to inquire other needs that the client may have. And as a result of that, you've limited your opportunity. And at the end of this third conversation, don't forget to ask for an introduction. Is there someone you know that has a similar need to what you've experienced? I know they've come to mind as we've been working through this process. Would you mind making an introduction? Now, they've made said yes all to this point. And remember, the law of agreement, they've already agreed to do that, and they don't want to act in a way that's incongruent with themselves. This is how you turn your clients into your unpaid sales force, your referral partners. And you thank them for the referral. You do some fun things for them. And if you want some ideas on that, reach out to me outside of this event and I'll share some innovative ways that you stand out and be noticed. And you're going to get introductions that get you in front of 
individuals just like that client that you serve that have very similar problems. Now, as we wrap up, I want to remind you of this. Producers who fail to engage in a systematic process of uncovering wants, needs, and goals, and the motivation, the why behind those wants and needs and goals are only 40% as effective in closing business as they could be. So I don't leave you with a question. How much success do you want in life? And how much success do you want to see in your business? Think about this. Failure's hard. Success is hard. You and I get to choose our hard. What are you going to choose? Are you going to implement a process that's going to allow you to be more successful? Are you going to be willing to do away with old habitual patterns of selling that may not be serving you well? And through this learning process, understand how we can ask questions to get the client to tell us exactly what they want us to solve go back and solve that problem, introduce the solution to them, get the yes to the solution, show them the tool that then is going to be used to implement the solution, and then move to what's next. This is how the top 5% of sales professionals in our industry write 5, 10, 15, 20 million dollars a year in business, and you can do exactly the same thing. Failure's hard and success is hard. Choose your hard. So let me leave you with this. I want to challenge you. Let's go out and let's find some more money problems that we can solve together. We've got an incredible team here at Vision Advisors, and our goal is to do one thing, to help you be more successful in what you're doing. But if we're not having regular conversation, we don't know what's going on in your practice. We don't know the challenges that you're experiencing, the struggles you're going through. We can't help you. We love to coach our professionals that we work with to even greater levels of success than what you're experiencing. And there's a number of financial professionals, some of you on this call that I have a call with every other week. We have a 30-minute coaching call to talk about what's going on in your business and how we look at and identify holes and gaps. Love to do that with you. But if you're not having conversation with our team and we don't know what you're working on, we can't help you solve those problems. So what do we do to remedy that? When you get your next opportunity, you pick up the phone, you call us here at Vision Advisors, 1-800-505-8489, 1-800-505-8489. That's what we do every single day, help you solve those problems. By the way, you can always go to visionadvisorsinc.com, scroll to the bottom of the homepage, and we've made ourselves available to the producers that work with us. You can schedule a 30-minute strategy call with any of our business consultants simply by blocking time on the calendar. Now, what I would encourage you to do if you do that, if we're going to be talking about a specific topic and there's information you need to share in advance of that, Put that in the notes when you're scheduling that call, or after you schedule the call, send an email with an explanation of what you want to make sure that we're going to cover. So if there's some homework, one of our team members needs to do in advance so we can serve you at the highest level. That's what we want to do. Hey, again, I want to say thank you for taking some time to be with me today. Many of you, are, your offices are closed today for the long holiday weekend. So thank you for tuning in. Again, happy 4th of July weekend, go enjoy and celebrate our 246th anniversary of a nation with your friends, your neighbors, your family, your loved ones. Be safe, and we look forward to serving your needs next week here at Vision Advisors. Thanks for joining me. Have a great 4th of July weekend.